A big fight has happened in Osaka. A family from the Takikawa clan, the most feared Yakuza in Japan, had to suffer a tragic fate because all of their families were killed by one of their enemies. Fortunately, there was a survivor from a Takikawa descendant, a little girl named Ekimi. Ekimi grew up in Brazil, one of the countries with the largest Japanese community. She still doesn't know about the incident that happened to her family in the past. She thought that she was just an ordinary girl living in Brazil with his now-deceased grandfather. Out of concern that she would forget her roots, his grandfather's friend, whom Akemi used to call senpai or teacher, taught her some sword techniques. Meanwhile, in Japan, we will be introduced to one high-ranking Yakuza named Takeshi. At that time, he was about to execute one of his underlings for having embezzled the organization's funds. His underling tried to negotiate to tell Takeshi the information no one knew but him. However, after Takeshi heard the information, instead of forgiving him, he killed him along with the other three of his subordinates with no apparent reason. Feeling responsible for his subordinate's mistake, Takeshi went to meet his boss, Oyabun, to apologize by cutting off one of his fingers. Luckily, Oyabun thought it was not necessary for Takeshi to cut off his finger. He thought that Takeshi had done more than enough for the organization. However, this was not the case for Kojiro, Oyabun's right-hand man, who, in the first place, had no respect for Takeshi, as he thought the latter used to be a Yakuza from the Takikawa clan. Cut back to Brazil, where we meet a man named Ronin. He just woke up and did not remember what happened to him, and all the doctors who had treated him at the hospital were also unable to find his identity. In the end, they called the police, hoping that it would help them. Not wanting to trouble the people around him, Ronan decided to leave the hospital. As we can see, it seems that he has been trained to do this. Before leaving the hospital, he took the katana sword that had been brought by the police earlier, and he hoped that by doing so, he could find the answer to who he was. On the other side, Akimi was getting her clan sign as a tattoo, and after that, she went to see her friend at a particular club, where she had to get into a fight because there was a man who tried to harass her. And for that, she was almost arrested by the police. Elsewhere, Ronan went to an antique shop to find out who the owner of the katana sword he was carrying was. He finally got an address that led to a place that turned out to be Akimi's house. Right at the same time, Akimi just returned home and was attacked by those same jerks who harassed her the night before. They tried to take revenge for what she did to them. Helpless and cornered, Akimi fought them all with all her might. Luckily, Ronin, who happened to be nearby her house, came at the right time to help her fight those bad guys. We cut back to Takeshi, who is now in Brazil, to find Akimi. Once he arrived at Akimi's house, with no explanation, he began to slaughter everyone. Akimi ran away in fear, she thought that Takeshi was targeting her. <laughs> Akimi and Ronin ended up at her sensei's house to take refuge from Takeshi. Finally, the fact about who the previous owner of the katana sword was is revealed, it belonged to Akimi's grandfather. However, Akimi had no idea about it all. All she knew about him was that he was just an ordinary old man, living just like others. At the end, her sensei told her one important thing for her to know, that the sword was destined to return to Akimi's hands and he asked her to find out more about it by giving her a photo and an address. In that photo, Takeshi was there with some people that looked like a family. Out of curiosity, Akimi went to the address given by her sensei, and Ronin followed her in the hope of finding some answer that might help him know more about himself. Once they arrived, they met an old man named Chiba, who was her grandfather's friend. He then explained to her that the katana sword she was holding was from the Takikawa clan lineage. Despite the explanation, Akimi became even more confused, and then she asked him what that stuff had to do with herself. However, Shiba couldn't tell her more about it, so in the end, there was nothing Akimi could do but be patient. Mr. Chiba did not want to tell her that she was actually a descendant of the Takikawa clan. Long story short, the day has passed. Akimi couldn't find herself to go to sleep, she kept thinking about all the things that had happened to her lately. An old woman named Chiyo then took her to a cemetery that was located behind the house. How surprised Akimi was when she saw her grandfather's grave was there too. Akimi then took a box from her grandfather's tomb. That box contained a newspaper about the massacre that occurred among the Takikoa clan. With each passing moment, 
the memory of the incident flashed through her mind. Unexpectedly, Takeshi arrived. He then told her that he was one of the Yakuza who used to work with the Takikawa clan, and his purpose of coming was actually to save Akimi, because his current boss, Oyabun, had sent his men to kill her. In the meantime, Kojiro was on a killing spree. He killed all the elderly who lived in that house. Ronin, who was sleeping in the warehouse, was surprised when he saw that all the elderly people who had greeted him were now covered in blood. In a desperate situation, Akimi and Takeshi tried to leave the place, knowing that they were outnumbered and would definitely be overwhelmed if they had to deal with Oyabun's men. In the end, she had no choice but to leave Ronin. Once Akimi and Takeshi arrived at some safe place, Takeshi finally told her everything about her family. He told her that she was a descendant of the Takikoa clan the most feared Yakuza in Japan. When she was a little girl, all of her family were slaughtered by her father's enemies, Oyabun. As the only one who survived the tragedy and also the last successor of the Takikoa clan, Takeshi, who was Akimi's father's confidant, was assigned to guard and protect Akimi. He then asked one of his subordinates, Daisuke, to run to Brazil with Akimi and then change their identities. Daisuke then claimed that he was Akimi's grandfather. It was planned before that Daisuke would reveal everything about her when she grew up, but unluckily, Daisuke was killed by a hitman hired by Oyabun. That hitman was none other than Ronin. Therefore, Takeshi came to Brazil in order to bring Akemi back to Japan, where some of the leaders of the organizations who used to work with Akemi's father were ready to avenge her family together with her as the legitimate leader of the Takikawa clan. Akemi made up her mind, she was determined to avenge her family and decided to go back to Japan. Before leaving Brazil, she went to her sensei's house to say goodbye, but how shocked she was to find her sensei dead in such a tragic way. Shortly after that, Ronin appeared, and she was sure that he was the one who killed her sensei, but Ronin denied it, stating that he couldn't remember anything. Blinded by her sense of revenge, Akemi didn't believe any of his excuses, especially when she knew that he was the assassin who killed her grandfather. After dealing with Ronin, Akimi and Takeshi headed to Japan by helicopter with the help of some insiders. Both of them then rushed to the pickup point, but they were betrayed. They thought that those people would help them, but it turned out that they deliberately trapped them, and they almost killed Akimi. Akimi fought with all her might, not wanting to die in vain. She tried her best, using her katana, to beat all of Oyabun's men, and she ended up defeating them all. Akimi's heart is set, she is the successor to the Takikawa clan. Afterward, Akimi and Takeshi resumed their goal. They went upstairs to catch the helicopter they had chartered, but it was not there. Instead, Kojiro and his men were there, waiting for them. Kojiro was furious when he saw Takeshi guarding the Takikoa successor. He then took his katana and aimed it at Takeshi. The latter died right before Akimi's eyes. Unexpectedly, Ronin came out of nowhere. When he saw an opportunity, he used it to kill two of Kojiro's men. A few moments later, Akemi dared Kojiro to duel with her using their respective katana swords. Akemi ignored the cut of Kojiro's sword that wounded her, that wouldn't stop her at all. Fed up with Kojiro's bragging, Akemi finally unleashed her signature move, and in the end she managed to slash Kojiro with ease. Following that, she saw Ronin lying on the ground, helpless. She was still annoyed by him and intended to kill him too, but Ronin apologized and told her later on that he really couldn't remember what he did. Akimi forgave him, but with one condition. He had to work under her power, as she would return to Japan and avenge her family.